In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned from you and, and given, given ourselves into the power of sin. sin. We, are we are truly sorry and humbly and repent. repent. In your, your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For 
the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your people, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This lament comes from a people who have had their hopes shattered. The visions of a rebuilt Jerusalem and a renewed people of God, spoken in Isaiah 40 through 55, have not been realized. Instead, the people experience ruin, conflict, and famine. This lament calls God to account, to, to be the God who has brought deliverance in the past. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake in your presence, as when fire kindled brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations would tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eyes have seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We, flay, we fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hands of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, you are our potter. 
We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Consider we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so, will we never turn away from you? Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, I'll give a little introduction here as we begin this. I thought we'd have a little fun with our preparations for Advent, Jesus' birth. A passage that is rarely preached on, it's the beginning of the first chapter of Matthew, by way of talking about the virtue of Jesus, his character, by way of looking at his predecessors, his ancestors. And so this genealogy in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17, consists of three groupings, each of 14 different ancestors. And most folks reading through the Bible, they look at that list and they just skip over it because I'm looking at our cantor today, our lay reader, the names are hard. So just be glad you're not all reading these names as we go through. So for those of you who are doing online viewing, Please pause the video, and on the website, there's a little click, there's a, actually a study guide that can go with this that you can fill in the blank, but since we're not handing out anything here and a safe, distance, healthy congregation today, that's simply for those who are viewing online. So here it is, chapter 1, verses 1 through 17 of the Gospel of Matthew. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, son of Abraham, son of David. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob, Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar, Perez, the father of Hezron, Hezron, the father of Ram, Ram, the father of Aminadab, Aminadab, the father of Nashon, 
Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David, the end of our first section. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Uriah's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asa. Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Jeroam. Jeroam, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah, the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amon. Amon, the father of Josiah. And Josiah, the father of Jeconiah. And brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon, the end of the second section of 14 names. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Seathiel. Seathiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abihud. Abihud, the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Akim. Akim, the father of Elihud. Elihud, the father of Eli Eleazar. Eleazar, the father of Matan. Matan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary, who's the mother of Jesus, who was called the Messiah. The end of our lesson. Aren't you glad you didn't have to read that? Thus, there were 14 generations, all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile in Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. So what a list of people, 42 names. Now, a year ago, I, uh, I've been tried, retired for four, four years now, I retired uh, January of um, 2017, so just about four years, and I have a to-do list. One of those to-do lists was to really get into doing the family genealogy. And I'm the youngest grandchild on both sides of my family, so somehow all the photographs and all the records came down to me, in part because nobody else wanted them. And I thought, well, I might as well do something with that. So I researched the Hively side, and I got us back to 1602 from the Lutheran parish records in a little town called Merstetten near Ulm. Those of you who know anything about um, Germany, that's in the southwestern part of what is now Germany. Two brothers came in 1749 and eventually settled in York County, Pennsylvania, and the rest, of course, you can say is history. My wife's side is a little different. We tracked her family, and they tie into English aristocracy who fled religious persecution in England. And the English aristocracy, as you go back further and further and further, we got into barons and dukes and earls, and then finally we got into William the Conqueror in 1066, and then we got into English kings, French kings, Scottish kings, Danish kings, Irish kings. You can call her your highness if you want to. Uh, and Welsh kings. Now, every time I would find more aristocracy, she would say, are we related to Jesus yet? And that was the big joke in the family. So once you get into the Welsh aristocracy, it wasn't enough that their records go back way back reliably to about 300 AD. That wasn't enough, however, so they invented a few links that took them back to Joseph, husband of Mary, stepfather of Jesus. And when I found, first of all, it's not a correct connection. I ran in, I said, Lee, finally, you're related to Jesus. <laughs> she went, praise the Lord. <laughs> it's funny. So you begin to see how your ancestry, by the way, we're still who we are, that doesn't matter, but it's interesting to read all the stories of all these people. So who is this Jesus that we celebrate? The culture of Matthew and the genealogy meant at that time, uh, this is not a great-grandfather, grandfather, son, grandson kind of genealogy. This genealogy skips. It will jump a generation or two as it goes along in part to prove a point. And I'll talk about what those points are a little later. So Luke, by the way, the, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, has a genealogy that has 56 different names, and that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. And Luke was doing a different kind of uh, character study on Jesus with that. So we're going to talk about a few of the names and unpack some of their story 
so you can begin to see what the character of Jesus was from Matthew's perspective. Who is this Jesus, you know, who shepherds view, who angels sing, um, you know, great story, and it's perfect for Advent season. Abraham is the father of the great covenant with God. God said, um, I will be your God, you will be my people, I will give you land, and I will make your ancestors or your generations as numerous as the stars in the heaven. Now, you all know the story of Abraham, so I won't go to great length about that. His son was Isaac. There's a story behind that. So back to Abraham, married to Sarah. They're in their old age. We don't know how old, except maybe 80, maybe 100 years old. And Abraham is sort of half complaining that although he has, he's prosperous, he doesn't have land that's his, however, he is without an heir with Sarah. And so shortly thereafter, there's some people who come into the encampment and they say, we have a word from the Lord for you. And that is the Lord will fulfill his promise that you will have a son. Now, while that's happening, Sarah's behind the tent flap listening and she giggles, she laughs, fall down kind of hysterics. And then the connection to that is the name Isaac, the name of the child means laughter, laughter. The child of the promise. Isaac um, married Rebecca when he was about 40 years old and for about 20 years, no children whatsoever. And then also later in life, they had twin sons, Esau, the firstborn, and uh, Jacob, the secondborn. Esau, is, it actually means sort of furry or hairy. He, he has a lot of facial hair and body hair. Jacob was sort of a scrawny mama's boy. Um, so that's the story of Isaac. Jacob, there's a story about Jacob. He literally deceives his father to receive the inheritance. The inheritance, the blessing, was supposed to go to the firstborn, which was Esau. And, and so uh, Jacob literally covered his forearms with a animal pelt. So it was fuzzy. At this point, uh, Isaac couldn't see well. And so he gave his blessing, could only happen one time, gave his blessing to the secondborn. And when the firstborn Esau heard about that, Jacob had to flee for his life. So some deception there. Um, Jacob eventually married sisters, Leah and Rachel, and by the two sisters, he had 12 children who would become the 12 tribes of Israel. And here they are with Leah. The children were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Dinah. With Rachel, initially no children whatsoever, but by um, Rachel's handmaiden, Zilpah, there were two sons, Gad and Asher, and very late in life, Rachel had Joseph. You remember the story, Joseph was the favored one. He could do no wrong, he didn't have to work, he didn't have to go to the fields, he had the coat of many colors. Remember the story? So we're going to move away now from Joseph. The next one in the list is Judah. Judah was the fourth born son um, whose family settled into the Palestinian hillside, later becoming the kingdom of Judah, the chief uh, capital of which was Jerusalem. It was tradition that the fourth born child, if a, an adult had many children, was to be given the scepter, the symbol of power. And through Judah, God's promise of land was fulfilled, the promise to Abraham. Next name on the list of the first 14 is Perez. The birth of Perez is quite a story. Tamar, a woman, daughter-in-law of Judah, the wife of Judah's oldest son, Ur, E-R. Ur died, and if you know the heritage of Old Testament times, the second-born son should have married the widow to raise up an heir to the firstborn, and he refused to do that. The third-born son, uh, Selah, didn't do that in a timely fashion. And so, out of impatience, Tamar 
disguised herself as a prostitute and seduced Judah. And from that union, twin sons, Perez and Tear, Tear uh, were, were um, born, offspring of infidelity in the genealogy of Jesus. Didn't know that, did you? Next on the list of Hezron and Aram, we don't know too much about them. Aminadab was the father of Elishaba, who was the wife of Aaron, Moses' brother. So we're now getting a little bit into Moses. Nashon was a, a captain during the wilderness, in the, in the captivity wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness. He took the census of the Israelites while they were in the wilderness. Salmon is only known as he points to Boaz. Boaz, great story. A wealthy resident of Bethlehem who married his son's widow, Ruth, as in the Bible of Ruth in the Bible. As you recall, Ruth was a foreigner from Moab who, when her husband Elimelech died, left her homeland to come back to Judah. The famous quote from the book of Ruth is, Don't urge me to leave you and turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Great quote from the book of Ruth. The father and son Obed and Jesse are known only as they lead to the ancestors of King David. And David, of course, you know, is the youngest of eight brothers. He literally was the last choice, possible choice, to be uh, named as king by the prophet Samuel, chosen to rule the people of Israel. That's the end of the first 14 names. I'm not going to go through them all. Aren't you glad? I'm actually going to skip the next 14 because they're all direct descendants of the royal line of David, beginning with Solomon. It's interesting, it says, Solomon, the son of David, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite, Bathsheba. The name Bathsheba never appears there, but that it should be. So, I'm going to skip to the third set for the sake of time. Selathiel continues the royal line after the people come back from being held captive in Babylon. And his son is Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel rebuilds the temple in Jerusalem. He was the last king of David's line that we have any detail about, the last king that's mentioned in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. Of the remaining nine people, Abiud, Eliakim, Azar, Zadok, Akim, Eliud, Eleazar, Matan, and Jacob, we have very little detail in the scriptures they really only are named in Matthew's list here. So with the intention of summarizing these 14 different, 42 different names, we see the heroes and the great Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Jesse, David, Solomon, well-known names in the Bible. That captures all the Old Testament covenants, quite frankly. We see some near greats like Nashon, who took the census during the 40 years while they were wandering in the wilderness. We have nine kings of David's royal line. We have two who were cursed by God, King Josiah, because he desecrated the, the altar in the temple. And King Jeconiah uh, so angered God, the Bible said uh, God really allowed Jerusalem to be conquered and the people being taken into exile in Babylon. And women, sorry ladies, um, it's very unusual for women to be prominently listed in ancestral accounts. Uh, especially these women, we don't, we don't see the heroines. We don't see, the, we don't see Sarah with Abraham. We don't see Rebecca with Isaac. We don't see Rachel with David. What Matthew lists are four women, Tamar with, Je uh, with Judah, Rahab with Salmon, Ruth with Boaz, and Bathsheba with King David. Now, there's some similarity here, with the exception of Ruth. All the other three were accused of scandalous behavior or adultery in Jesus' ancestry. Uh, these were the ancestors of the genealogical closet, those, you know, we say skeletons in the closet that we're not polite to talk about. Secondly, the four women were all foreigners. 
Tamar was a foreigner without name of the country. Rahab was from Cana. Ruth was from Moab. Bathsheba was, from, uh, was a Hittite. And the four women, I think, are illustrative that God generously employs all kinds of people with surprising results. And so it is in Jesus, God not only will embrace and celebrate the great and powerful, but also the outcast, the scandalous, and the foreigners. So for those of you who are mystery sleuths or proofreaders, we're going to count. I'm going to skip a little bit or we'll be here until noon. Um, it says there are 14 names in three blocks. I'll skip a little bit. The first block has 14 names. The second block has 14 names. So you're going to count with me the third block. Can you count to 14? Can you? Okay, we're going to do it. Seathiel is one. Zerubbabel is three is Abihud. Four is Eliakim. Azor. Akim. Zadok the priest. Eliud, Eleazar, Matan, Jacob, Joseph, and by adoption, Jesus. That's it. There's only 13 names. No matter how many times I've read through that list, there's only 13 names in the last block of what Matthew says is 14. Isn't that interesting? Now, scholars have worked on this for nigh on 2,000 years. It's important because it is incomplete. You know, it has a gap, it has an opening. In this, in this list, we see, we see the great and powerful, the heroes. We see unknown connections. And by the way, people who read that said, oh, maybe my people are in that list too. Ah, maybe... I'm related to Jesus. And scholars and the church fathers actually said that in some of their writings. God working in us in many ways that we're not even aware of. So the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 verses 1 through 17 shows a Jesus as a direct child of Abraham, a direct a descendant of, of David. You know, Joseph, betrothed of Mary, then adopts Jesus, naming him, which actually then consummates, makes full of bringing Jesus into David's line. So it's of the ancestry of Abraham, the great eternal covenant. Jesus fulfills the eternal covenant. I will be your God. You will be my people. I will give you land. I will give you descendants, as many as the stars in the sky. He gives us the entire panorama of the entire Bible. God's promise may have begun with Abraham and Sarah, then through convoluted people and characters, stories are odd or delayed or deceptive or dubious or scandalous or even unknown gaps. But God's eternal plan continues to work out for you and for me, just as it did for Jesus. And so today, as we celebrate and remember just as Joseph adopted Jesus, Jesus in, bapti in baptism has adopted you and made you part of that eternal covenant. We're now part of that eternal story of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah. All those names, all those stories are ours as well. We are heirs of Jesus' promise. This is the biblical witness. We see Jesus in our midst today, in our lives today, in our families, in our heritage. Together in spirit and in truth, we celebrate the coming of Jesus. God's grace and peace be with you. Amen.
we grow bold now to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join now in, in faith and in hope as we uh, engage in the prayers of the people. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and your relationship to it. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with, with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for those in poverty or facing food insecurity, Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who may live with depression, anxiety, pain, addiction, or other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering, support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who have died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, whose names we know or who still whose names are unknown only to you. Sustain all who yet yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, or through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts ourselves, our time, our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered and feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, on the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth afford your glory, O Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Take and eat. Again, after the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, all of you drink of this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this, do it for the remembrance of me. Take and drink. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. For those who may view, be viewing um, on the internet at home, I invite you to join with a prayer for spiritual communion, although not here face to face. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you present here sacramentally. Come now spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, and unite myself entirely to you. Never be separated from me. Amen. <laughs> Let a mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descending comes for homage to. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts now to receive God's blessing upon your day and upon your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. 
the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you for being with us today.